Anyone who is suddenly confronted with a line of police officers is usually in an extremely uncomfortable situation. Either they have just caused an accident, have witnessed or have been a victim of a crime, or are even suspected of having committed a crime. But did you know that the officials use secret tricks during their work that we don't even notice at first glance? Why do police officers actually touch the taillight of our car? And why should we never accept anything to drink during an interrogation? We answer these questions and other questions in today's video. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the secrets cops use on you that should be illegal. Rear Lights Touch Hand over your license and registration, please. It is not in and of itself unusual for police officers to ask a stopped car for the relevant documents. However, during such a routine check, the officers may do something that makes no sense at first glance. When they approach the vehicle, they briefly touch the car's taillight. But what is this strange behavior all about? Would the police officers like to check whether the taillights have been installed correctly? No, it's not quite like that. In fact, this practice dates back to a time before police cars were equipped with cameras. If an officer left his fingerprints on the taillight, he could prove beyond any doubt that he made contact with the vehicle in question. The search for a missing police officer should be made easier in this way. In addition, scanning or tapping the rear taillight is also a good way to throw the driver of the vehicle a bit off guard if he is perhaps just thinking about how to make any drugs or weapons disappear. He will be struck by the unusual behavior of the officer and be torn from his thoughts. With dash cams on most cop cars these days, touching the taillights has become more of a relic of the past. So if you see an officer pull this trick on you, it doesn't necessarily mean they're particularly suspicious. Rather, it means they're having a hard time breaking old habits. Lying Are police officers actually allowed to lie to us in order to tease a confession out of us? In movies, we often see officers claiming to a suspect that the evidence is overwhelming and that there are multiple witnesses and that the accomplice would have admitted everything anyway, when in fact this is not true. In real life, however, police officers are not allowed to fib about the subject's legal facts and duties. A statement made against the background of such deception cannot be used in court. However, this is not true in all countries. In the United States, for example, police officers are allowed to lie to put you behind bars. In fact, such tactics are used quite often during interrogations, a trick that works particularly well with young and inexperienced suspects. Some people in the USA have already been convicted because they allowed themselves to be carried away into making a false confession under the pressure from investigators. A glass of water would you like something to drink? Anyone who asks this question during an interrogation should think twice before answering it. The officers might as well ask, would you like to give your fingerprints in a DNA sample? Since the water glass is the property of the police, they are also free to secure all traces of it. Although the material obtained is not accepted as evidence in court, it does show the officers whether they are on the right track or not. Ultimately, everyone has to decide for themselves whether the thirst is stronger than the will to be able to be traced back without any problems. Garbage In most countries, until the garbage truck picks up your garbage and incinerates or recycles it, it legally belongs to us. So if someone removes something from the bin, we are dealing with a case of theft. However, things are a bit different in the USA. Here, the property status of the garbage expires as soon as it is on the curb in front of the property. This also allows officials to secure the waste without a search warrant and to examine it for possible traces. And no, this doesn't just mean the severed head of a corpse, of course, but also ordinary everyday objects, such as handkerchiefs or toothbrushes, on which the DNA of a resident is found. Nano Hummingbird If you want to monitor and spy on a subject undetected, you are well advised not to get caught. It is obvious that a criminal would recognize a conventional drone immediately, but what if there is just an ordinary small bird fluttering around? 
Since the feathered contemporaries are much less sensational, a Californian company decided a few years ago to develop an inconspicuous surveillance drone in the form of a hummingbird. Controlled by remote control, the fake bird sends its images live to the officials so that the direct visual contact is not necessary. This so-called nano hummingbird can both hover in place and zoom through the air at up to 20 kilometers per hour. Star Chase Anyone who discovers one of the following devices on their car can rest assured that the police are fully aware of their location. The so-called Star Chase is a GPS tracker that the American police can fire to mark, track, and locate suspicious vehicles. To prevent the Star Chase from falling during the chase, there is a viscous industrial adhesive at the end. Now available in more than 30 U.S. states and Canada, the device costs around $5,000 to install. As soon as the tracking transmitter is attached to the car, it transmits its position data to the control center, which means that the fleeing vehicle can be located and intercepted without air support. Lie Detectors Because lie detectors are not in fact the wondrous devices they like to be called, their use in court is not legal because the alleged findings from such a test cannot be used anyway. Lie detector tests are not even carried out by most police. Although these so-called polygraphs are used in the United States by the police, as well as by the FBI and the CIA, the accused often forget that the results are no longer recognized as judicial evidence there either. Despite this, many suspects are very unsettled by what the lie detector spits out, and it is not uncommon for them to be tempted to confess. In one case, the American investigators even conducted a fake lie detector test, the results of which were already known from the outset. Although the accused actually passed the test, he admitted to having been at the crime scene in view of the fake results. Alcohol Tests As part of a traffic stop, it is necessary to take an alcohol test. In this regard, we have to blow into an appropriate tube or perform little tricks, such as standing on one leg, touching your nose with your eyes closed, or saying the alphabet backwards. In view of all these small tasks, which some of us probably wouldn't even be able to complete sober, a fundamental question arises. Do we have to do all of this at all? The answer is probably, but not always. As soon as the officials have recorded our personal details, our obligation to provide information ends in most situations. In detail, the supposed requests to blow and balance are only formal requests that we do not have to agree to, unless the officer has probable cause to believe you may be drunk. However, anyone who now believes that the police officers will flee with a self-confident no is rejoicing a little too soon. In this case, officers may decide to take a blood test at the station, but they need the order of a judge or prosecutor to do so. So while you may not have to oblige with certain orders, rest assured, the officer will get what he wants one way or another, the easy way or the hard way. Subpoenas in principle, the police are free to summon suspects or witnesses for questioning. What many people don't know, however, is that we are not obligated to accept such an invitation. Accordingly, no one can force us to appear on the date mentioned, or even to respond to the letter. Only when we receive a letter from the court or the public prosecutor's office do we have an obligation to appear. Although we, as the accused, can exercise our right to refuse to testify in order not to incriminate ourselves, we have to go there in any case. The Last Look at the end of today's video, we would like to introduce you to an extremely curious case from the past. On December 1, 1924, German Fritz Angerstein brutally killed eight people. Angerstein's wife, mother-in-law, and sister-in-law were among the victims who the perpetrator murdered with a bladed weapon and an axe. After the gruesome case became known, the killer initially managed to present himself as only a survivor of a bloody attack. However, since Engerstein got caught up in some contradictions in his statements, the officials became suspicious. In order to convict the perpetrator, the police officers used an incredible trick. They claimed to have created 
so-called optographies of the victims. These are the images that are burned into the retina of a dying person at the last moment. Since the corresponding motives showed Angerstein's face, he confessed to the terrible murders. However, the accused did not know that such a thing is not possible at all and that the police officers had simply lied to the suspect's face. So it was that Fritz Angerstein was sentenced to death and executed on November 17, 1925. Forced Confessions One of the more bizarre and terrifying techniques police may use against you could happen if you're suspected of a serious crime. Police like to round up suspects and bring them in for questioning. Whether you attend the interrogation willingly or police obtain a warrant to bring you in, what happens next could be terrifying and life-changing. Many officers will do whatever it takes to get a confession out of you, whether that confession is legitimate or not. For example, there is no time limit for how long an officer can keep you in the interrogation room. In fact, he could keep you there as long as he sees fit until you break down and give a confession, even if you weren't involved in the crime. This has been a tactic that's been used for decades, but more often than not, it merely leads to false confessions because the innocent individual simply cannot take the stress of the situation any longer. While in the interrogation room, the officers can do virtually anything they want to you, so long as they don't hurt you or assault you in any way. They can yell at you, throw things at you, play the typical good cop, bad cop scenario. Everything is fine so long as they don't commit a crime themselves. Whether confession is forced or not is irrelevant in most cases, though you do have the right to recant a false confession. Intimidation is one of the easiest ways for a cop to make a criminal break. They may even keep you in the interrogation room overnight and question you even harder after you've been subjected to a lack of sleep. Cellmate Confession Another strange way that cops can pin a crime on you is by recording conversations you have inside of your holding cell, jail cell, or prison cell. In these situations, cops can legally record your conversations so long as one person inside the cell has given permission. For example, if you're locked in a cell with one or two other people, as long as one person gives consent, they can record anything you say or do and use it against you. This has proven to be a relatively popular way of getting criminals to confess to further crimes, even after they've already been convicted. They could even have words with your cellmate in private and turn him or her against you. In this scenario, the cellmate may not only agree to having the cell recorded, but they may also agree to help lure a confession out of you in exchange for shortening his time behind bars. This is perfectly legal and has worked out for many officers in the past. While you may think that cellmates are as thick as thieves, it doesn't take much to convince a trapped man to do whatever you ask if it means getting his freedom back. Hey guys, that's it again with today's video. Which police trick surprised you the most? And do you know of any other tactics that officers regularly use? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. And with that, thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.